Hi everyone, uh, so I'm back and this time I wanted to show you a model that I already built a year ago but this is actually the first time I uh, am unveiling it um, Some people call it the Beast uh, My name for it is Wildcat 6x6 and it is currently my most powerful model I ever built besides the Bugatti Chiron but this one is in it and is in a, entirely in a different lick because it has a much lower part, part count. So let's see well, what this is all about. Basically, as I said, it is based uh, on the Wildcat 4x4 with additional features and of course more power. Just like the Wildcat 4x4, it uses axles which use double type of suspension. So they are pendular and they have independent suspension. Now, because this is a 6x6, the rear axles are uh, also pendular uh, using this mechanism. So when one goes up, the other one goes down, and when one goes left, the other one goes right. This gives the Wildcat amazing flexibility when driving off-road, and it is one of the most uh, flexible off-roaders I ever had. Now, the independent suspension. Now this one is used when you're driving when you're driving quickly over small bumps where the weight of the axle itself is too large to respond so the shock absorbers are dealing with quick small bumps while the axles themselves are adjusting to the terrain while going slowly now I mentioned that each uh, of these uh, uh, axles is powered by four motors now two motors are driving each of the wheels using a two-speed gearbox which means that not, no, not only are these axles they're technically trans axles because they also include a gearbox and each wheel has a dedicated two-speed gearbox which means that each wheel generates more power than the 9398 crawler or the uh, extreme off-roader or the uh, or the Zetros creates so much power it's just incredible basically and each axle using four motors has more power than my previous models which were the Tiger 4x4 or the 6x6 because it's just much more efficient because you only have three gears to uh, transfer the power to and then to the uh, planetary hub so it is extremely powerful and Thanks to its extreme uh, power, it can create a lot of torque and a lot of speed. When I say a lot of torque, uh, I think it's uh, close to 1000 Newton centimeters if you combine all the uh, figures. And the speed that I reached today was almost 15 kilometers now, 14.8. And at this speed, you can get some really good jumps, I can tell you that, and you will see that later. So, as you can see, this is my most uh, powerful and most, um, I don't know, just crazy model that I ever built and I'm really happy how it turned out. Now I'm gonna uh, show you a bit of footage uh, driving it uh, off-road and then we're gonna come back and look more into the details of how everything even works. I would like to thank Sariel, Racing Brick and Breaker23 for some of the footage that is shown in the video. First I'm gonna shift this below here. Mm -hmm. So we're now five here.
footage. Now let's go a bit into the more technical details. So as I mentioned before, each of the axles uh, is driven by uh, four motors, one for the each side and using a two-speed gearbox. I also had a question, uh, why not build a lighter model that can use uh, less motors? And while I was thinking that and I did some math, the math uh, when it comes to building Lego things tends to prefer going big with more power than small with uh, less power because the what uh, really matters with performance is power to weight ratio. Now this model has around 1800 bricks but it has 12 drive motors. A regular let's say Lego trial truck, off-road or whatever is around 1000 so something like that parts and usually it's only like two drive motors. So this while it has 80% more bricks than a usual crawler, it has six times the power and this is what matters. Even the smallest, the lightest off-roader I can manage to build is like, I don't know, around 550 minimum parts including the bodywork with two motors and this is 1800 with 12 motors and if you do the math uh, it just implies that the, the more powerful, the bigger you build it, the higher the power to the weight ratio and this is what matters with this thing. So here's a virtual model of the Wildcat 6x6. Uh, I always make a virtual model of uh, any kind of uh, project I'm working beforehand because it allows me to troubleshoot and explore different ideas before I actually start the physical build. And using a virtual model makes the physical building experience much easier and I can get rid of 99% of the problems beforehand. So yes, here's the virtual model. And I'm gonna uh, concentrate on the front axle and show you a bit around how everything works. So as you can see, first thing here is this massive uh, turntable, the big turntable. This is uh, the one of the pivot points for the front axle. And there are two additional pivot points here and, and here. So basically the whole front axle rests on, three, on these three parts. Uh, the front axle represents over a quarter of the brick count of the model so it's uh, almost for 500 bricks out of 1843 pieces so the piece count is quite low actually for the size and the weight of the model it has less uh, pieces in the zetros but the performance of course is uh, on a much higher level okay talk about performance let's concentrate on the driveline so I'm gonna hide everything but the drive line. So you can see here we have four drive motors and one more motor here in the center which is responsible for switching. So for now let's uh, hide the switch motors and the drive motors and you can see the drive line itself. It is very simple, it only uses three gears at any uh, given time and because there are no perpendicular drives, uh, no differentials, nothing such it is extremely reliable and robust so i have yet to break a gear to skip a gear and trust me the model went and chew a lot of grass and ate lots of dirt and everything still works so it i'm really happy at how this turned out so basically uh, the front axle here is uh, where the front two motors are attached and they're driving the right side uh, wheel in this case and the same is uh, on the rear motors, they're driving the left side wheel, everything is mirrored around. Uh, the differential casing is used as a 24 foot clutch gear. Lego, please make a 24 foot clutch gear, the differential takes so much space, thank you. And the 16 foot uh, clutch uh, gear is responsible for the low gear. So in low gear we have three 16 foot gears, so it's one to one ratio. And in the high gear, we are accelerating the drive by three times. So the whole thing is spinning three times quicker uh, than, uh, than in the low gear, basically. Now, how to switch everything. So now I'm gonna concentrate on the switching. The switching is done via powered up M motor. It is driving uh, these two worm gears and these two worm gears are engaging the, the gearbox uh, rings. So I'm using the worm gears because they keep the position. So once the gear ring is in the gear, nothing can force it out. 
and I'm using the clutch gear here so to stop the motor from overloading when it reaches the final position and so it doesn't accidentally overheat and shut down which I had the case before I was, uh, started using the clutch gear so everything is there for a reason and finally let's concentrate on the steering mechanism so the steering mechanism it is also as everything with this model it is over dimensioned and one of the most over designed and over engineered me steering mechanism I ever made uh, first we have the steering arms which are the longest I ever put in the model and they are long so they are so long because they have to go around the motors and everything uh, and then we are using two steering racks with two gears so if one fails we still have another and using two uh, steering racks also allows the racks to be much more stable there is much less side uh, side movement much less slack and everything is just much more solid and less flexible and to increase the rigidity of the whole system we are also using a steering uh, rack reinforcement down here so it cannot bend in any direction the steering rack is extremely powerful extremely strong uh, very reliable and I have yet to break uh, I think I only broke it once when I was uh, jumping over those large ramps I think I landed on the front wheel and this broke off but other than that it is almost indestructible so yes now another thing I have to be uh, very careful when or thinking ahead let's say when building such a model is accessibility so I'm using six controllers to drive this thing and they are all hidden inside the cab which means they also have to be easy to reach and this is done by pulling out the red pins so one here one in the back here and one on the bottom here as soon as I pull off this out I can reach uh, my controllers which are very dirty um, yeah um, I forgot to mention that after this I will take apart this model and clean it thoroughly so everything will be taken apart and cleaned all the pieces but yeah basically as you can see there are one two three controllers on this side and the same on the opposite so six controllers belt motors and four additional control motors it's just yeah it's crazy and i like it so the biggest weakness this model has is the wheels falling off and i think that is due to too much weight so for the next project i will think about on how to reduce the weight and find the middle ground between going too big and heavy and too small and light so I hope you guys like it too and remember to please subscribe because I am planning to present another model that I built for this event and that should be done probably next week. So again, thank you, enjoy and have a good one. Bye!